Today we're going to look at neurons and neuron function. First, let's take a look at a neuron. You'll see on this neuron that these long pieces out here on this end are called the dendrites. Dend is a term in Latin that's often used for tree branches in dendrology or people who study trees. So these are the branches of the neuron. This is the cell body of the neuron where most of the neuron is. And inside of that is typically a nucleus. The long part of the neuron is called the axon. And at the end of the axon are some more pieces that will hit the dendrites of the next neuron. This is your standard neuron. Neurons are electrically charged. That's how they send signals from place to place. So when you think of a charge, for example, like a battery that sends electrical signals, you think of it having positives and negatives. And that's exactly what neurons have. To have positives and negatives in biology, we use ions. Remember ions like ionic bonds where you had a sodium that gives up an electron so it's positive and a chloride that gains one so it's negative. Those make our electrical signals. Sodium in particular is one of the important ones that we will use in the neuron. Another one that we will use is potassium, which is K+. So between the sodium and the potassium, they travel back and forth across the neuron membrane to make the electrical charges that form the system. Now, let's zoom in a little bit more on a neuron head so we can get a sense of what's going on in a neuron. Now, a normal neuron that's just hanging out has both sodium and potassium associated with it. The sodiums are typically on the outside and the potassiums are typically on the inside. In fact, there's a little pump that is constantly pumping sodiums out and potassiums in. The only thing about this pump is that it is uneven. So it is pumping out three sodiums all at once. One, two, three. While only pumping in two potassiums. This makes a difference in charge. So there are more positive things on the outside of the neuron than on the inside of the neuron, which means that the inside of the neuron actually has a slightly negative charge. Now, let's talk about what happens when a neuron receives a signal. So we think of the neuron as having a slightly negative charge on the inside. Sodiums are on the outside, potassiums are on the inside. And let's say a little signal, boop, 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 comes by and hits the neuron. There are two kinds of possible signals. One of them is excitatory. It makes the neuron want to go. What the excitatory signal does is it adds sodiums from the outside of the neuron to the inside of the neuron. That makes the inside of the neuron slightly more positive, even though the rest of it is still kind of negative. This is called a depolarizing signal. It's the signal that excites and makes things go, makes things more positive by bringing sodiums inside the neuron. Now, the opposite of that would be an inhibitory signal, a signal that stops things from going. To do that, we want to make the inside of the neuron more negative. So let's say this time the little signal comes by on the other side, doot, 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 and it says, oh no, stop something. What it's going to do is it's going to send out potassium ions. When it sends out the potassium ions, it makes the inside even more negative than before. This is called a hyperpolarizing signal. So the hyperpolarizing signal 
brings potassiums out, making the inside more negative, and is inhibitory. It will stop things from happening. If we were to make a graph of the signal in a neuron, it would start at minus 70, which is the negative where the neuron usually hangs out. If a neuron is depolarized, it might increase a little bit. That gives it an active signal. If it's hyperpolarized, it might decrease a little bit. That gives it the inhibitory signal. And then it will come back to the normal. To get a neuron to really go, you actually need to add up a bunch of depolarizing signals. Once the depolarizing signals reach a threshold level, which is somewhere around positive 30, then the neuron knows that it's time to fire, and it will send a long signal all the way down its axon until it reaches the next neuron. Let me show you how that works. So first we need a depolarizing signal. The depolarizing signal comes in and causes sodiums to go inside. One signal is not enough, so then we get another depolarizing signal that comes by and does the same thing. Send some sodiums inside the cell. Maybe you even need a third depolarizing signal. Now we've reached the threshold level. We've summed up the signals, that's our summation. And the level is high enough that the neuron says, now we need to send it, not just in the body of the neuron, but down the axon to the next neuron. That is called an action potential. The action potential happens in three steps that follow each other down the neuron. Step one is basic depolarizing. Sodiums go in to the axon. Boom. Now that starts at that part of the axon, and then it moves down to the next part. As the second part of the axon is depolarizing, the first part is way too positive. Neurons don't like to be positive for too long, they can't stay positive forever. So as soon as that's done depolarizing and the signal has moved from here over to here, this part wants to fix itself, it wants to repolarize. But it just pulled in a whole bunch of sodiums, it's hard to push those out. It's fairly easy though to push out the potassiums that were there to begin with. So that's the very next thing that happens, is it pushes out the potassiums. Now, the neuron is much longer than this, so we need to make a longer view of the neuron. So now as we move down the neuron, the depolarizing signal, the first part of the signal, is moving almost to the end. The middle part has already depolarized, but it needs to repolarize, so it pushes the potassiums out to bring the signal back to neutral. But now we have a problem of things being in the wrong place. The sodiums are on the inside, the potassiums are on the outside, and it's supposed to go completely the opposite way. So back at the original part of the axon near to the cell body, things need to swap. So the sodiums are pushed out and the potassiums are pushed in. It happens that this happens at exactly the same rate as it did originally to set up the resting potential of the neuron, and this is called re-establishing the resting potential. It uses the same sodium-potassium pump and it brings the whole thing back to negative 70, which if we think about that graph that we drew earlier, if we just made a great big depolarization and then a repolarization, and then we want to come back to the nice steady level we were at. Now this is pretty good, but there's one more important thing that needs to happen. We need to actually send the signal to the next neuron. So here are the dendrites of the next neuron. You can ignore my terribly drawn neurons. And in the end of the axon of this neuron are some little vesicles and inside of them are a whole bunch of neurotransmitters and they're waiting for this signal. Once the depolarizing signal 
the sodiums coming in get to the end of the axon, they release a new signal. This signal is calcium. Calcium is released into the neurons. So you see, not just good for your bones, also good for your neurons. And when the calcium goes in, the little vesicles go to the end and they release their little neurotransmitters by exocytosis. The little neurotransmitters travel to the next neuron and when they find the right spot, they send a new signal to depolarize. If there's enough little neurotransmitters, then the signal will be high enough that it will send it down to the next neuron. So that is our whole process of an action potential. Depolarization, repolarization, reestablishment of the original resting potential, and then the release of neurotransmitters with the release of calcium to send the new signal to the next neuron. That's how neurons work.